Hello, you're very welcome to tonight's episode of The Cozy Corner. And my guests are Sean Ward from County Leitrim and Bernie Connolly from Longford Town. You're very welcome. And uh, our first meeting was by chance in the Longford Arms a few weeks ago. Indeed, it was by chance, surely. (laughs) And uh, I invited you to come along to The Cozy Corner. And... um, I believe that the two of you also met by chance. We, myself and Bernie are good friends. We met by chance at the Banjo Festival in Longford back a good few years ago. I, was, I didn't know him and he didn't know me. But we know each other well since. <laughs> and uh, Bernie, I, I was talking to you earlier and yes. y- you were saying that you heard Sean play. And That's right. I, I went into the Longford Arms into the foyer and Sean was playing. And there was a Yankee guy playing the fiddle as well, and they were playing lovely country music, so I went home and got the accordion, went in to join them. And you've been so playing... So we're together ever since, yeah. yeah. We yeah. Crying yeah. Carrick and Shannon, mostly, yeah. at weekends. Yeah. That's the sort of a thing we do. Mm-hmm. Well, Sean, you grew up in County Leitrim, whereabouts? On the Sleeve and Mountains, a place called Ahi Cashel, it's near Balnamore. It'd be between them, Shanbo and Balnamore, out the mountains now, the scenic route. <laughs> and uh, how did you start playing the fiddle? My mother played the fiddle. They were traditional players, like. I don't know whether they agree with what I'm at, but anyway. And uh, why why do you say, is there a difference now in... in, in My, uh, well, I suppose everybody, it's like your appearance, you change with age. Um, uh, Me playing probably has changed over the years, like, because of listening to different types of styles of music from America and Scotland and everywhere. I'm probably, you know, uh, the, the real grassroots fiddle playing uh, uh, probably wouldn't agree with me at all. They the, the probably regard me as an outcast. <laughs> but, but I'm happy enough, I'm, I'm happy with that. In fact, I'm very proud of being an outcast. <laughs> well, if I can take you back to the days of your childhood, oh, yeah. maybe you tell me a little bit about the music uh, th- that, that you... Lovely, lovely. The, in them times, it was simple and country houses and... The pubs were only starting at the time, and music was in the country houses up the mountain. There was somebody, a party, somebody was either going to America or coming back. It was better if the one, the party when they come back was better because they'd have more money than when they were going, but, uh, which is obvious enough. But uh, my father and mother used to play the fiddle, and there was a, an old hall there, Lee's Hall at Ahi I remember, I think that was the first place I ever played with my father and mother. And Jackie Lee used to play the fiddle too, and there was no pressure on anybody. You'd done your own thing, and that was it. It, it could be out of tune, it could be in tune, it could be anywhere. Nobody passed a bit from us. There was no perfection, no, there, was no, uh, there was no recording studios, I can assure you, I can assure you that. <laughs> uh, but life was simple. So it was really all about the spirit and soul of the music? Oh, oh it was, yes. Aye. And the best of singers around there and everything, you know. Uh, old traditional singers and everything. And, and no pressure on anybody. You'd done whatever you thought you could do and that's it. If it wasn't right, so what? And what about the tunes? Were they local to the area or were they... they be, and they'd be played in their local style. That's the thing now. Nowadays, everybody... There's sort of a standard style at the moment. Everybody is... You wouldn't know where anybody is from now. They could be from Clare Donegal. But in them times, if there was a distinctive style. You knew when a person started to play where they were from. You could say, that fellow's from Longford. Or that fellow's from Cavan. Or this other woman up here, she must be from Donegal. You'd know right away her style. But now, they're nearly all playing the same now. And, the, and the area styles have died, sort of. I don't know, I don't know why that is, but... I, I suppose it's like people's accents, really, exactly. you know. Exactly, that's right. People have changed in appearance and they talk different too. There's a new language now, there's nobody talking the real old Irish language anymore. They're talking, they're talking up over their stomach or something. I don't know what they're at. Mm-hmm. I don't understand them. I don't want, uh, part of me doesn't want to understand. So, so you're going to you're going to to carry on in your in your I'm own self. Plow, uh, I'm going to plow my own old lonely furrow. <laughs> right. I have the most of it plowed, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <It's> unique. <laughs> so Bernie is saying you're you're, you're unique. Um, Bernie, you're going to sing a song for me. I'll try. <laughs> right. What are you going to sing for me? I think I might sing the road by the river. Okay. In oh, your okay. own time. That's perfect. (coughs) 
I have walked along Broadway and I've been down the Strand and I've seen the great highways in every land but in all the great cities the likes I've never seen of the road by the river that flows through Raheem. I had only one brother, a gay lad and bold. He was killed in an ambush, may God rest his soul. On the spot where he fell, a white cross can be seen. Down the road by the river that flows through Raheem. Rows and rows of new houses are built on the green, and the cinema stands where my own home had been. The river is there, but no trace can be seen of the road by the river that flows through Raheem. Now everything changes, and we change as well. And I'm sure that you too, if the truth you would tell, wander back to some well-beloved spot in your dreams, like the road by the river that flows through Raheem, like the road by the river that flows through it gives me great pleasure now to introduce the junior under 15 Cayley band from the Joe Callaghan group in Edgerstown and they will be representing County Longford this year in the Leinster Fla which takes place in Ballymahan later this summer and they're going to play a jig for us the coming of spring. Thank you. 
welcome back to part two. I have a group of girls now from Edristown who recently took part in community games. Hello girls, you're very welcome to the Cozy Corner. Hi. So maybe you might begin by telling me your name, please. Keir Crossan. Lucy Grant. Ashley O'Reacon. Kimberly O'Reacon. Quiva Connell. Ella Grant. And what are you going to sing for me tonight, girls? Um, Consider Yourself okay, from girls. the musical Oliver. From the musical Oliver? Yeah. Okay, girls. So in your own time, take it away. talent there from girls so young. Bernie, you grew up in Longford Town. Tell me, was there much music when you were growing oh up? Oh God, there? it was full of music, it was. It was, I could name five or six accordion players and they were all great at it. And there was the Masterson brothers, Billy and Paddy, they were twin brothers. They had their own band. There was Charlie Dunn. Charlie was a genius altogether. He played the accordion, he played the piano as well. And he, and he would be reading from O'Neill's 1001, just pick out any page at all and he could play. And, and he'd get fed up playing this way and he'd cross the hands and start playing this way. Uh, what decade <laughs> it was amazing we, he was. What decade are we talking about? Uh, you're talking about the 1950s. Right. Yes. And there was Frankie Murphy was a good accordion player. They had a pub in Ballymatton Street in Longford. Yes. There was Tom Coughlin was a good accordion player. Ah, there was lots of them around. And was there music in your own family? Um, not so much music as singing. Right. We're all good singers. Right. Yeah. And were you inspired then to take up the accordion? I was accordion? inspired by the Mastersons, actually. Billy Masterson used to come in and out to our house and he'd bring the accordion with him and play and one night he arrived with a little small 12 bass accordion. 12 o'clock at night, I was in bed, I heard this accordion playing. I got up, come down the stairs. Yes. He told me if I could play a tune on it, that I could have it. Right. So I played on top of old Smokey with one finger. I was so used to looking at him playing, I knew where the notes were. That's amazing. But my mother actually paid him for the accordion. I didn't, he didn't give it to me free. Right. I think it was 30 shillings or something like that at the time. One pound, 10 shillings. And so you obviously practised hard because... In no, I, 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 uh, I slept with it that night. 
Sunday morning I was sitting up in bed learning tunes and I had about five tunes off before I went to Mass. But it was still with one finger. <laughs> right. But, uh, hey, hey, come on from there then. And then um, Billy come into our house one night and he asked me to play the accordion for him. Sure, the accordion was hanging in, in a press, hanging up by the straps in a press. And uh, I hadn't looked at it for months and he gave out to me. Right. And I never left it down after that. So much so that the music brought you, you know, all around Ireland and well, beyond. It brought me around the world, actually. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, well, I joined Maliki Sweeney's Kelly band. He was the big band at the time. He was from Armagh. Yes. He used to record and we played on the radio, the BBC and Radio Ireland. Right. And... Uh, what decade was that? That was 1957, March I, uh, 1957, I joined Maliki Sweeney. Right. I played with him until about the end of 1958. I broke away from him. I started my own band. Right. Then in April 1959, he come looking for me. He, he was after getting a tour of America, and I had to go with him to America. And that was, I was, arrived there the 18th of March it was, the day after St. Patrick's Day. I was playing a Hikeli in the Temperance Hall on Patrick's Night with my own band. I was in New York the next night playing with him. So you flew to New York? Yes. And uh, we landed at Shannon, took off from Dublin, landed at Shannon with engine trouble for two hours. <laughs> with yes. the old playing with the propellers. Yes. You know, it, it, I think it was the Viscount was the name of it. And... The next place we landed was in Gander Airport in Newfoundland, in a snow blizzard. And they had to get out, they, had, they couldn't make the whole journey that time, they had to refuel in Gander. And uh, they had to get out snow plows to get us off the ground. So we got, we finally arrived in New York then. And uh, it was Idlewild Airport that time, it wasn't Kennedy Airport. It's the same airport, but it was called Idlewild. I remember we arrived there and oh, we had a good time. And how long did you spend in the States? Three weeks. So that was an oh, amazing experience yeah. back in those years. It was. And then I met, I met up with some good musicians there. Um, yeah. Paddy Killorn. Yes. Famous fiddler. I, I was made an honorary member of his club. Right. How I got in with him, Frankie Murphy was playing in St. Mel's Kelly Band in Longford. And I was in St. Mel's Kelly Band for a couple of months, in between leaving Maliki Sweeney and forming my own band. I was with St. Mel's, and Frankie emigrated to the States. So when I got over there, I looked them up straight away. And another interesting thing, too, well, he was playing with Paddy Killorden at this time. So that's how I met Paddy Killorden, through Frankie Murphy. Yes. And they had a club, and they used to meet every Sunday. The whole music group would meet together and they'd play for hours. And uh, I was there one Sunday, and I was made an honorary member of the Paddy Killorden Irish Music Club. And I still have my membership card. And that's, that's 58 years ago. That's an amazing story, <laughs> yeah. and you're still going strong. Still going strong. Sean, if I could turn to you, um, you're going to play another tune for me. Yes. I'm going to play a slow, a slow tune. It's, it's a tune of the famous fiddler from Scotland, uh, from up near Aberdeen, uh, the James Scott Skinner, they called him. And this tune, he composed it, he composed it for Queen Victoria, because Queen Victoria invited him down to Buckingham Palace to play anyway. Well, she invited him down anyway, I don't know what happened after that. But he composed this tune in her memory, and it's called My Highland Queen. So now, we can make what you like of that. <laughs>
that's absolutely beautiful. So you play every Sunday night in Cryons in Carrick and Shannon, which really is the cradle of Irish music, isn't it? A lot of music in Cryons. And the, the, the music there nearly every night. We'd be there every Sunday night now. And um, I suppose uh, there's just so much music around Carrick and Shannon. There's plenty of all, t all types of music around it. Like the, the traditional music and... The all different sorts of because uh, it's a tourist town and there comes in music from from Germany and France and everywhere. You you could meet anyone there playing any sort of music. So it's a very cosmopolitan sort of place. Exactly, that's the name. That's the word for it. <laughs> <laughs> so. And with you know so many people moving to the town, is there a great exchange of music? Well, there is indeed. There is indeed. But I try to stick to my own sort of music. It's all in a hoe anyway. It's not easy to change. At this stage, to learn the no dog new tricks. <laughs> it's difficult. Well, do you know, it has been an absolute pleasure having the two of you, uh, Sean and Bernie. Um, sadly, this brings us to the close of this week's Cozy Corner, but it also brings us to the close of this series which began in February and we set out to showcase music in the Midlands, in Longford, Westmead, Cavan, Leitrim and it has just been an amazing journey tapping into that music. We hope to be back with you again in the autumn with a new series. So if you're interested in being part of that series, please contact us through our Outtake Community Media Facebook page. Um, Meanwhile, until we meet again, Bannock today or if Galair, you're going to play us out with a set of tunes. We will. We'll Bernie, what will we play? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a couple of jigs. Right, we'll play a couple of jigs. Right. 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 Paddy's Return okay. and, and Gallagher's Frolics. Lovely. Twice yeah. through. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
that's absolutely beautiful. So you play every Sunday night in Cryance in Carrick and Shannon, which really is the cradle of Irish music, isn't it? A lot of music in Cryance, and the music there nearly every night. We'd be there every Sunday night now. And um, I suppose uh, there's just so much music around Carrick and Shannon. There's plenty of all, t all types of music around it, like the, the traditional music and just all different sorts of because uh, it's a tourist town and there comes in music from from Germany and France and everywhere. You you could meet anyone there playing any sort of music. So it's a very cosmopolitan sort of place. Exactly, that's the name. That's the word for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what you know, so many people moving to the town. Is there a great exchange of music? Well, there is indeed. There is indeed. But I try to stick to my own sort of music. It's all in a hoe anyway. It's not easy to change. At this stage, to learn the no dog, new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. But well, you know... It's an honorary member of the Paddy Kilorden Irish Music Club. And they still have my membership card. And that's, that's 58 years ago. That's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah. And you're still going strong. Still going strong. Sean, if I could turn to you. Um, you're going to play another tune for me. Yes, I'm going to play a slow, a, a slow tune. It's, it's a tune of the famous fiddler from Scotland, uh, from up near Aberdeen, uh, the James Scott Skinner, they called him. And this tune he composed, he composed it for Queen Victoria, because Queen Victoria invited him down to Buckingham Palace to play anyway. Well, she invited him down anyway, I don't know what happened after that. But he composed this tune in her memory, and it's called My Highland Queen. So now we can make what you like of that. <laughs> Keir Crossan, Lucy Grant, Ashley O'Reilly, Kimberly O'Reilly, Quiver Connell, Ella Grant. And what are you going to sing for me tonight, girls? Um, Consider Yourself okay, from girls. the musical Oliver. From the musical Oliver. Yeah. Okay, girls. So, in your own time, take it away.
amazing talent there from girls so young. Bernie, you grew up in Longford Town. Tell me, was there much music when you were growing oh up? Oh God, there? it was full of music. It was. It was. I could name five or six accordion players, and they were all great at it. And there was the Masterson brothers, Billy and Paddy. They were twin brothers. They had their own band. There was Charlie. Do- <laughs> Hello, you're very welcome to tonight's episode of The Cosy Corner. And my guests are Sean Ward from County Leitrim and Bernie Connolly from Longford Town. You're very welcome. And uh, our first meeting was by chance. Charlie was a genius altogether. Uh, He played the accordion, he played the piano as well. And he he would be reading from O'Neill's 1001. Just pick out any page at all and he could play. And and he'd get fed up playing this way and he'd cross the hands and start playing this way. Um, what decade <laughs> it was amazing he was. What decade are we talking about? Uh, you're talking about the 1950s. Right. Yes. And there was Frankie Murphy was a good accordion player. They had a pub in Ballymatton Street in Longford. Yes. There was Tom Coughlin was a good accordion player. Uh, there was lots of them around. And was there music in your own family? Um, not so much music as singing. Right. We're all good singers. Right. Yeah. And were you inspired then to take up the I was accordion? inspired by the Mastersons, actually. Billy Masterson used to come in and out to our house and he'd bring the accordion with him and play. And one night he arrived with a little small 12 bass accordion. 12 o'clock at night, I was in bed, I heard this accordion playing. I got up, come down the stairs. Yes. He told me if I could play a tune on it, that I could have it. Right. So I played on top of one smokey with one finger. I was so used to looking at him playing, I knew where the notes were. That's amazing. But my mother actually paid him for the accordion. I didn't, he didn't give it to me free. 
Right. I think it was 30 shillings or something like that at the time. One pound, 10 shillings. And so you obviously practised hard because in no, later I, years... I, I, uh, I slept with it that night. Sunday morning I was sitting up in bed learning tunes on it. I had about five tunes off before I went to Mass. But it was still with one finger. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I come on from there then. And then um, Billy come into our house one night and he asked me to play the accordion for him. I'm sure the accordion was hanging in, in a press, hanging up by the straps in a press. And uh, I hadn't looked at it for months. And he gave out to me. Right. And I never left it down after that. So much so that the music brought you, you know, all around Ireland and uh, beyond. Brought me around the world, actually. Tell me a little See? bit about that. Yeah, well, I joined Maliki Sweeney's Kelly band. He was the big band at the time. He was from Armagh. Yes. He used to record and we played on the radio, the BBC and Radio Ireland. Right. And uh, what decade was that? That was 1957, March. I, uh, 1957, I joined Maliki Sweeney. Right. I played with him until about the end of 1958. I broke away from him. I started my own band. Right. Then in April 1959, he come looking for me. He he was after getting a tour of America. My, uh, well, I suppose everybody, it's like your appearance. You change with age. Um, uh, my playing probably has changed over the years, like, because of listening to different types of styles of music from America and Scotland and everywhere. I'm probably, you know, the, the real grassroots fiddle playing probably wouldn't agree with me at all. They probably regard me as an outcast. <laughs> but, but I'm happy enough, I'm, I'm happy with that. In fact, I'm very proud of being an outcast. <laughs> well, if I can take you back to the days of your childhood, oh, yeah. Maybe you tell me a little bit about the music uh, th that you... Oh, lovely, lovely. The, in them times it was simple and country houses and the pubs were only starting at the time and music was in the country houses up the mountain. There was somebody, a party, somebody was either going to America or coming back. It was better if the one, the, the party when they come back was better because they'd have more money than when they were going. But, uh, which is obvious enough. But uh, my father and mother used to play the fiddle and there was a, an old hall there, Lee's Hall at Ochacashel. I remember, I think that was the first place I ever played with my father and mother. And Jackie Lee used to play the fiddle too. And there was no pressure on anybody. You'd done your own thing and that was it. It, it could be out of tune, it could be in tune, it could be anywhere. Nobody passed a bit from us. There was no perfection, no, there, was no, uh, there was no recording studios, I can assure you, I can assure you that. <laughs> but Life was simple. So it was really all about the spirit and soul of the music. Oh, it was, yes. Aye. And the best of singers around there and everything, you know. Uh, old traditional singers and everything. And, and no pressure on anybody. You'd done whatever you thought you could do and that's it. If it wasn't right, so what? And what about the tunes? Were they local to the area or were they... they would be, and they'd be played in their local style. That's a thing now. Nowadays, everybody... There's sort of a standard style at the moment. Everybody is... You wouldn't know where anybody is from now. They could be from Clare Donegal. But in them times, there was a distinctive style. You knew when a person started to play where they were from. You could say, that fellow's from Lamford, or that fellow's from Cavan, or this other woman up here, she must be from Donegal. You'd know right away her style. But now, they're nearly all playing the same now. And, the, and the area styles have died, sort of. I don't know, I don't know why that is, but... I, I suppose it's like people's accents, really, exactly. you know. Exactly, exactly. That's right. People have changed in appearance and they talk different too. There's a new language now. There's nobody talking the real old Irish language anymore. They're talking, they're talking up out of their stomach or something. I don't know what they're at. I don't understand them. I don't want, uh, part of me doesn't want to understand. So, so you're going to you're going to to carry on in your in your I'm own self. Plow, uh, I'm going to plough my own old lonely furrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have the most to be ploughed, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <It's> unique. <laughs> so Bernie is saying you're you, you're unique. Um, Bernie, you're going to sing a song for me. At home, consider yourself part of the family.
talent there from girls so young. Bernie, you grew up in Longford Town. Tell me, was there much music when you were growing oh up? Oh God, there? it was full of music, it was. There was, I could name five or six accordion players and they were all great at it. And there was the Masterson brothers, Billy and Paddy, they were twin brothers. They had their own band. There was Charlie Dunn. Charlie was a genius altogether. Uh, he played the accordion, he played the piano as well. Right. And, he, and he would be reading from O'Neill's 1001. Just pick out any page at all and he could play. And, and he'd get fed up playing this way and he'd cross the hands and start playing this way. Uh, what decade <laughs> it was amazing he was. What decade are we talking about? Uh, you're talking about the 1950s. Right. Yes. 